the Google Plus. Yay, we have more people joining us. And we are doing the RUSD webinar for Fluberu and Google Forms. And while we're waiting a couple more people to join us, this is called Google Plus, and I know you just got this open for your networks, uh, for your campuses, and you're going to love it because now you can see how you can easily have meetings and things off-site when you're in different places and you can communicate, you can join webinars. It's a great way to have multiple people join you. You can have up to 15 if you're on your school domain. So when you're in your RUSD Learns, you can have up to 15 people on this. And you can share screens, you can share resources, you can chat on the side. I see people chatting now. So it's, it's a great opportunity to, to use this. I was at Old Miss about two weeks ago teaching, and they're going to start using this for, for their student teacher observations. Instead of driving all over the country, uh, because they have some 250 miles away, they can do it for student teacher observations too. So you'll love it. Also, when you're in your Google Plus, go back and look at some of the communities. I recommend those as well. Tracy, when you want me to start the real show, I can start the real show. I'll just wait for you to give me the go-ahead. Anybody have any questions about Google Plus while Tracy's doing her last little fine-tuning? So Tracy, I, are you ready for her to start? I've got a couple of people. I've got somebody emailing me from Ramona, the people from Ramona. I don't know. I haven't heard anything from Lisa Kells, Coleman Kells. Um, obviously, Stephanie is with um, Susan. I forget who else. Oh, Kim Yena. I haven't heard. She emailed me earlier um, that she couldn't. She didn't see the invitation. I told her when to check again, and I haven't seen her since. So I've emailed everybody. If we want to go ahead and start, then. All right. Well, Lisa's good. gone and start, so I'll go on and start. And I think we can we can do this on speed dating style. We'll make it very useful and we'll make it quick because I know your time is precious. So I'm glad to be with you today. I'm Jillian Reed and I'm in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, I work with the EdTech team and I'm the Director of Academic Technology for a school here and you're going to love Fluperu. Some of you may have already been using Google Forms. I know you've had some training on Google Forms, um, but there's some new things that you can do with Google Forms as well. They've had some new changes, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of screen sharing with you in a minute, and if you had the email from me earlier, you should have the agenda up. If you don't have the agenda, there is a um, quick little um, URL for that, a tiny URL. So I'm going to go in and, and do the screen share so you can see the agenda and see our document that we're working in, and I can kind of go through a couple of things with you to begin with. So let me turn on my screen sharing here. And... Which one I want to share with you? There comes somebody else. Yay! So I'm going to share this screen with you. And what's nice is I can pick which window I want to share with you. So this is um, the agenda for today that we're going through. And so you'll kind of lose me for a little bit probably while I'm talking. But this is here for you as a resource to go back to as well. So even though um, we're going to go through it quickly today. Know that this will continue to be open for you. So it's going to show you just kind of what we're doing. We're going to do a quick little Google, Google Forum review, showing you some of the new things. I'm going to show you what Flubrew is, give you an overview video, show you that. Then we're going to actually take that little quiz that some of you created or answered or responded to, and we're going to grade it with Flubrew. So what is Flubrew? And it's something you can use with Google Apps with the forms, and it's a tool that lets you easily grade objective assignments and do in-class assessments. I think you're going to love it. It's quick and easy, and it's free, which is awesome as well. So I don't know how many of you have used Google Forms before, but I want to show you, um, and I'm assuming, are you all seeing my window right now with the um, presentation? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. You're seeing it? Yeah. All right. So this is the presentation. I just want to talk to you about Google Forms. I know several of you have had some training on this already. And there are so many ways you can use it with surveys. You can have feedback on lessons, which is really nice because um, that way if you give a lesson and they, you get this feedback really quickly, you can tell which of your students grasp the concepts and which ones need some retesting or reteaching. Background knowledge is there, concept understanding, all these different kinds of things you can use the forms with. It's a great discussion starter as well. You know, you can ask a question, let everybody answer in a quick Google form, 
have some discussions about the pros and cons of an issue and then reevaluate see if anybody changes their minds about an issue. Great for student or teacher observation, data collection, PD, RSP to events, exit tickets to your class when they leave a class lesson to see if they grasped it. And then the big one that we're here for today is the quizzes and tests, thus Fluberoo. So we're going to be talking about Fluberoo today. Um, so what's new in Google Forms since you were trained on it? Um, these are just some quick basic ones. Now you have auto saving. Yay, you don't have to save anymore. It's like all the other Google things. There are several that it auto saves, several keyboard shortcuts. You can also work together now. You can collaborate with other people on a form. So you can collaboratively build a form instead of one by yourself only. You can invite people via email and social networks and new ways to kind of analyze your responses as well. So I'm just going to show you a little bit of that. I'm going to let you read through this. I know I've already touched on some of these. Um, some of the others I just might want to touch on some of the changes. Or you can have a sign in to view. The to, to view. You can require students to sign in before they see the results of, an, of a form or to see the, the form. You can have responses they can go back and edit. You can um, choose where you want the responses to go. Also, bi-directional language support, so that's really important too if you're teaching um, Hispanics or other foreign languages, and especially the bi-directional is important in that it's like the Chinese orientation. If you're teaching Mandarin Chinese or something, you'll reorient from right to left instead of just left to right. So lots of new changes in Google Forms. I encourage you to look at them. Um, what's different is when you'll look at it with me in just a minute, you'll see that some of the locations for the live form URL is different. The location of the spreadsheet is different. There aren't as many themes. We had so many great themes, but they're building them. They're about twice as many as there were about three days ago. So know that they're coming. And the confirmation message editor has changed too. Uh, and some people are really excited that the responses are no longer truncated. If it's a long response, that it's easier to view those longer responses now. New things that are coming, more themes, and hopefully the ability to insert an image. So that's kind of the forms. And we're going to take these forms today and we're going to take our little quiz that we practiced with. Some of you filled out the information. And we're going to grade it with Fluberoo. And Fluberoo is a script. Google has lots of great scripts that are pre-made and you can also create your own. And so when you apply a script of Fluberoo to the results of a form that have been in a spreadsheet, then you can look at the results of your survey or your form results very quickly in lots of different ways. Another really neat thing is you can instantly email everybody who took the, the survey. I can in one minute grade it and then turn right around and email those results out. So it's really fast, really easy, and a great assessment tool. I'm going to show this little video and I'm going to turn it up really loudly so that hopefully you'll hear it as it plays. This is on the Fluberoo website and it actually plays from YouTube so you'll see a couple of ads come up that I'll pop out of. But I think it'll give you a good overview of Fluberoo. Whoops, and let's go back one more because it went one too many. There we go. And one more forward and hold it just a second. It got click happy on me and we will get the video playing. Here we go. So yeah, I think we're good. I think that about wraps it up. So great. I'll send a follow up email. I don't there's Thanks for checking out the short demo of Google. For this demo, I created a fake assignment using Google Forms and submitted answers myself. All of the submissions were automatically inserted into the associated spreadsheet shown here. Now that I have all the submissions, I'd like to grade them, which is where Fluberoo comes in. Fluberoo is a script that you can install from the Google Script Gallery. To save time in this demo, I've already pre-installed it. Once installed, you'll see a new menu called Fluberoo at the top with the other menus. Let's select Great Assignment and see what happens. In step one, Fluberoo asks me to select a grading option for each question asked, such as if it's worth points, if it should be skipped, or if it identifies a student. Fluberoo will do its best to identify the correct option for you. Once I've correctly selected all grading options, I click Continue. In step two, Fluberoo asks me to identify which submission should be used as the answer key. 
Looking through them, I recognize the first one as a submission I made earlier, which I want to use as the answer key. Once selected, I can continue on with the grading. Grading should finish in under a minute. Great, it's done. Now I can click on View Grades to see the results. Note that to record the grades, Fluberu has created a new adjacent worksheet called Grades. You can see it down here in the lower left. <laughs> At the top of this worksheet is a summary of the grading, including the average score. Beneath this are the grades for each submission, including total score expressed in both points and percent. And I'm going to stop it there because I think you can watch that later, and I'd really like to go back now with you and, and just do it. I see some of you are having trouble with the video. So if you had trouble with the video, I apologize. But it's right there, hopefully you heard it, and it's right there on the website for Flubaroo um, for the agenda today where you can see it. And if you look at the agenda, you can play it right within the website. But what I want to do now is just going to take you, and let me just give you my whole desktop because I want to take you and show you how you can do Clubaroo, how you can utilize it, and how you, you do it, create it with a Google Form. So let me put you on the screen share again. I'm going to do the whole desktop, and maybe we'll make sure that way that you can see everything. Uh, you're going to get to see my messy desktop. Are you seeing this right now? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when we go and we're getting ready to do Flubaroo, and the first thing you're going to want to do is create a um, form. So some of you have done Google Forms in the past, and we're just going to go to my drive, drive.google.com, and we're going to create the form. Are you seeing this okay right now? Yes or no? We can see it, but there's a it almost like a mirrored echo effect. Okay, well then I bet I know what I can do for that. Hold on, let me change it again. Let me go this way, and let me just get my drive. Let's see if this works better. How's that, better? Yes. Okay, so we'll create a form. When you're in Google Drive, go down and create a form. And we're going to create this form here, and this is the new Google Forms, where the, the different themes pop up like this. And now I can just pick a theme. I can easily change it later, so I'm just going to pick a default one. I'll do this one. You're not going to see the theme when you first create it. You'll see it when it goes live. So if you notice from the, when you had your forms the time before, when you had your lessons, it does look different than it did in the past. Um, and so I still have the same capabilities. I have the ability to give it a title. I can give it a description. I have the same capability of doing different types of questions where I can choose whether I want a multiple choice, a checkbox, um, choose from a list or whatever I'd like. I can decide if it needs to be a required question by clicking right here. And then when I'm done, so I might just say this is my name. One, one thing you might always consider is first name, last name. And I like to do them separately so I can sort them alphabetically if I'd like to. And you can put extra help text text there, but I'm just going to make this a short text one, and I'm going to make this a required question. Sure. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I know you've already had some, um, yeah. some lessons in Google Forms, but I want to show you some of the things that are a little different. Notice that I now add my other items down here. It's in a different location than it used to be, so I can now add a checkbox test or some other test. I still have the ability to edit these questions. I have the ability to duplicate questions, to throw them away. I can easily move them around just by grabbing them and putting them in different orders. In addition, my confirmation page is different now. At the bottom, I have the ability to show a link to submit another response. I can publish and show a link to the results of this form, allow responders to edit responder responses after submitting. Lots of different things here in my confirmations. My view the live form is now at the top here. And I can choose my response destination. Do I want it to go to a spreadsheet? Do I want to go to a new sheet in an existing spreadsheet? Do I always want to create a new spreadsheet? What do I want to do for my responses? If you're in Google Forms and you're going to use Flubaroo, you'll want to be sure you're using a spreadsheet, not just keep it in Forms. So basically, the new Forms is just a little bit different. I think you're going to find the new um, Aspects of Google Forms very exciting. I think there's a lot of great things that you can do with them you didn't do before. 
And then here's our button if you can see our heart when we're getting ready to do that. So now I'm going to go on and, and stop screen sharing for a second so I can make sure that I'm giving you the right window when we get ready to show you how Flubru actually works. So I know that when we had, if you remember when you saw the agenda, we had that little quiz that you took. Mm -hmm. And it was a survey that you filled out a form and you took a little demo quiz. And I want to show you what it looks like uh, on the back end. First of all, just to remind you, this is what our quiz looks like that we took the other day, that you took if you had time, and it's fine if you didn't. But it just was a quick little form like this, very objective questions. First name, last name. I include the email address because I wanted, you know, you'll probably want to be able to e email the students. If you're doing this in your Google Apps domain, you have the option at the top of your form when you create it to require a sign-in. So you have lots of different options in that realm as far as requiring a sign-in. Now think of this though that if you're doing it, if you're sharing your form with people outside your domain, you may not want to have that require sign-in because once they get to your domain, if they're not a member of your domain, they won't be able to do that. They won't be able to sign into your domain. So you would only want to do that if you're um, actually going to be sharing this uh, with people in your domain. And then here is, which is good for your students, but here is what the form looked like, the one that I built in the new Google form. And I could go look at the live form again here, but what it did on the back end is what I want you to see what it looks like when it comes in the spreadsheet so that you can now um, go on and view how we're going to put Flubaroo in here. So here are the people who actually were able to participate in the spreadsheet. Um, are you able to see that okay? No. Is it not showing at all? Too small. It's showing, but it's very tiny. I'm making it bigger for you. How's that? Tell me when it's big enough. Better yet? Getting better. Okay. It's really big on my side, but we'll keep making it big enough till you see it for sure. How's that? Did you put your email? No. Is that large enough now? It's still really small. It's still really small? I'm going to make sure that, okay. Let me get it even bigger. And you're not going to have to see the whole screen at one time. So are you seeing any of it at this point? Is it large enough for you now? Mm -hmm. Getting better. Let me wait a minute because it's really big from my perspective. I wonder if it's just taking a second for it to come through. So as we're waiting for it to get bigger, let me go ahead and tell you what you do when you're in a demo, like when you're in a Flubaroo spreadsheet. So when you're in a spreadsheet, getting ready to do your Flubaroo, you have your results here. And Flubaroo is a script. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to Insert and go down to Script. There are two ways you can actually get to this. You can get this here this way, or you can also, also go to Tools and go to the Script Gallery. But I'm just going to go to Script here, and now you should see the Script Gallery. Are you seeing that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a lot of different scripts here in education. Mm -hmm. The fastest way to get it, though, probably is just to type it. Well, it's long. I can't really see it. Are you having trouble seeing it still? Yes. Okay. Let me and it, let me get. Okay, I'm gonna make sure you're locked in on me. Now you're locked in on me, and let me go on and just get it a little bit bigger. If you have your mics open, if you mute your mic, it'll make it a little easier for others to hear. And if you want to speak, of course, I mute your mic. I'd love to hear it. So there, there it is. Are you, those of you who still have your mic open, is that a better view for you yet? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So there's Flubaroo. I'm going to go ahead and click search. And Flubaroo comes up in the bottom here. All I have to do now is scroll over where I can see it so that you can see it as well. And I tell it to install. And when it installs that script, it's installing it just on that one spreadsheet. 
that whenever you decide to use Blueberry on a spreadsheet to grade some tests, you do have to do it each time on each spreadsheet. Only once per spreadsheet, but you will do it. Scripts on Google Forms. It's a script on a Google Form. You're using the spreadsheet part of the Google Form, and you're installing a script. So now, when I'm down here, it's going to want some authorization. And that's really going to happen the first time you ever put it on a Google spreadsheet. It's always going to ask you for an authorization. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so I can give it the authorization now to get in here. So I'm going to zoom back down and get it. Let me get us down here where I can see it again. Oh, okay. <clears throat> There it goes. Now I can authorize it. Sorry I had to make it small for me to find my button and then I'll make it big for you again. Then it says now you can run the script. So now I can run the script and I close it. Then I can close that window again and now I'll show you the magic. Here's what we all came for. So let me make it big for you again. So here, if you notice, on the spreadsheet now, when we get it, we now have something new up here. Before, we never had Flubaru up here, but now, across our spreadsheet, we can tell that the script has been installed because Flubaru is there. And what we're going to do is grade the assignment. So we just This is how easy it is. We have our spreadsheet of answers. We're going to grade our assignment. So now it's running the script. It takes just a second, and here's where our magic begins. I'm going to zoom in big again for you here. On each question that it's seeing in my spreadsheet, it gives me an option of how I want to grade it. It recognizes that my name and email addresses are actually just student identifiers. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to leave those alone. It recognize, doesn't recognize it. I obviously misspelled capital, but that's okay. Um, so yeah. what is the capital of Tennessee? I get, this is one of the newer functions of Flugru. I can, I can weight my different um, questions with points. So I'm going to make the capital of Tennessee be two points. Which one of the countries has, and it's the question that goes on, it was the longest shoreline. I'm just going to let that be one point. Who is the author of the National Anthem? I'm going to make that be a three-point question. Let me come down a little bit so you can see. What is the state flower of California? That's one point. The optional part of trying to use the word flubru in something fun and fun sentence, that was just for fun, so I'm going to skip grading that one. I don't want to grade that. So I've been able to assign my point values to everything, and now when I look at this, everything's been identified, all my points are assigned, all I have to do is grade the entire spreadsheet as it continue. And this is when the magic begins. It tells me here are my results. Here's when they submitted them. But it wants to know where my answer key is. So you'll always need to go in and create an answer key. You can do this either through the form itself or you can just go into the spreadsheet and create your answer key just across the rows. You give it the, the right answer so that it can do its grading. It's grading my assignment and it's already finished. That's how quickly it goes. Mm -hmm. Here's what Flubery looks like now. I took my, my quiz okay. and the spreadsheet. And yeah. so at the top I have this summary that I can look at. It said I had seven points possible. The average points of what everyone took when they took the test, the average they scored is 4.33. Counted submissions were 9. Number of low scoring questions were 2. And what is really nice about this, if you look across, I'm trying to get down here where you can, I'm trying to maneuver so you can see everybody. People who have the red scores did not do so well. Oh, no. I know. Well, if you remember, and for those of you who are being embarrassed right now, uh, I told some of you to make mistakes on purpose. Yeah. I told people to make mistakes on purpose so they knew the answers. They were doing this to help our, our results come out in a way that we could actually look at them. So you can see who took the test or the quiz. Some chose not to put their email address in because that was optional. For your students, you might want to make it required. 
you can see for each question what their what their scores were, what their points are, what their percentages are. And if their scores, if their text is in red, that's an indicator that they have a problem. That's an indicator if their text is in red, they scored 70% or less. So that's a really quick way to see who's had trouble with the concept. And another thing that BlueBrew does, it gives you orange highlights for questions that had really low answers. So when I look at I and I look at J, and I'm trying to figure out what that is, I can go up and look. What is the capital of Tennessee? And which of these countries has the, the world's longest shoreline? I can tell that's a concept I need to reteach. It quickly tells me that kids didn't grasp that concept. And I can go back, because it's made a separate sheet on my spreadsheet, I can go back to student submissions and I can see exactly what everyone put in here. So it doesn't override the spreadsheet of my answers, it just gives me more information. And that quickly grades everything and tells me this one wasn't graded, that was the fun answer. We can go see what those fun answers were if we want to. Um, so we're really key. Fluberu, Fluberu, oh, Fluberu, where art thou, Fluberu? Um, Fluberu makes grading less like a, uh, what was it? I've already missed it. Let me get smaller here because I can't tell. But Fluberu, I was totally Fluberu by that online quiz. I really flubbed on my Fluberu test. Fluberu is a clever website. Um, created for smart and creatively people. I flew Baru's house and said hi. I flew Baru, my pet brown bear, home to Alaska. So some people got really um, creative and had some fun with that. So that's that's one of the things that it does instantly. It gives you all these great results that you can instantly see how your students uh, performed on the test. But that's not all it does. Then you can do a couple different kinds of viewing of the data. I can go and view my report. I can um, also look at other ways of viewing the report. So here I get a histogram. And the histogram is a little hard to read because um, we didn't have that many results. But it is a histogram. And the more results you have, the better information you're going to have in this histogram. So I get this histogram that I can then easily see everything here in the, in the information. And I can email it to myself. In addition, if I just go to form and I show a summary of the responses, and this is just through the Google Forms, I get some great results here as well. So this, this is some of the improvement in the new Google Form in that now I have some real graphs about who knew what with the capital of Tennessee, which one of these countries has the world's largest mm. coastline, how the students answered. So I'm getting a lot of information on how the, the, the responses came through, how, what percentage here is shown in a very visual way as well as just in um, words, I mean in, in data itself. If I decided I wanted to regrade this, if I cha wanted to change the weighting on it or if somebody else came in and tested mm -hmm. it or I need to do something, I can regrade it. I can also email the grades and when I email these grades, if I didn't want to, if there was someone I did not want to email, I could just delete their email there. There are going to be some improvements in this in the near future. But now I can include the answer key. I can include a list of questions and scores. I can send an email that says, we will be working more on some of these concepts this week. And if I actually sent the email right now, and I'll go on and send it just for fun. Some of you will see it in your email. So there it goes. It tells me it was successfully emailed to five students. So five of you will be getting your grades. Uh, and some others did not receive it. So that is how Flubaru works. And before I go any further with this, I, I would love to, to just kind of back out of this for a minute and open it up for a couple of questions before I show you more. Any questions about how Flubaru worked in there? Is there anything you want me to go over again? Um, any questions about that? Can you see ways that you could utilize this with your students or in your classes? If your mic's muted, make sure you unmute it to talk again. Any comments you want to put in the window as far as how you could use Slibaroo? 
I will tell you it's a really quick, easy way to get some objective answers. And you don't have to make it really um, in detail. It doesn't always have to be for a big quiz or a big test. But you could do it really quickly just by um, trying to, to, to judge last night's homework assignment, to get an opinion about a, com a, a current event. I mean, you can just do one or two little questions and do it. Um, so the form, these can, yes, and I see in the chat, Tracy, that you said you can embed this. It's very easy to embed this. So when you get ready to share these and share your results, you can share them with um, an embed code and embed it in your HiQ page, absolutely. Um, and so, yes, practice helps, but these Google scripts are just really easy. And if you remember, all we did was install the script. We went to insert, and we went to, um, let me just do it one more time for you. We just went to insert, and we went down to the script. And when you go to the script, just as a review, you just go up and you type Flubaru, and then it'll pop up in the search, and then you install it. And then after you've installed it, um, it'll be in your menu across your spreadsheet. It'll be there for you again. And then you can just tell it to grade or regrade or whatever. The first time you'll authorize it, and you'll grade it. And this is you, it will replace it, and you say yes. And then you get all these options again on how you want to grade it. And if we changed it again now, we gave everything one point, which we could, we would get new grades. So now if I just change it to everything has one point except for the very last one, which I skipped, it'll quickly go on and grade, and we can see how quickly it'll adjust the grading now. It wants my answer key. Here's my answer key. I continue. It's grading my assignment. And now we've already regraded it a different way. And so now we can see that it's different than it was the first time as far as what the average points were, what the percentages were, everything changed, everything shifted. So it's that easy just to, to regrade something if you want to regrade something as well. Um, anything else that you'd like to, sh to ask about that before we kind of bring this to conclusion? I think if you look back on um, one thing I wanted to bring to your attention again was just to make sure that you see the resources that we have for you again on the the agenda page so that you can go back to this and practice because I know it just really helps if you have the ability to, to go back and practice and, and do things. Um, so here is the agenda page and let me blow it up for you again. This was the workshop page from today. And so you have, we've pretty much gone through this kind of in a speed dating view since we had a, a little bit of late start, and I apologize. Mm -hmm. I thank you for your patience. Mm -hmm. um, know that coming in Flubaroo are some new things where you can export the grades to Google Docs. You'll be able to manually grade some questions if it were a short essay. Um, there'll be some expanded email options. They're improving the email capabilities, and they're going to have Spanish translations. So if you teach in a bilingual school, there'll be some Hispanic um, options here and some Spanish tra translations. So we, we have the presentation that we started with is right here. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, some information about the forms, what's new. These are the two, two little videos I recommend. This is the Google Forms video, the top one. And the one that you had difficulty seeing today, the Flubaroo video. Not only is it on the Flubrew website, but I've embedded it right here. So it'll be a great review for you today to go back um, today or tomorrow and just look at the overview of Flubrew again. It's pretty much what we did exactly together here, but it's just the overview of Flubrew in, in a short video on YouTube. I put some resources here for you. So here's some Google Forms help. These are the Forms resources, the new the new features and forms. Um, Je Jenny's done a great job here with some Google Forms taking new shape. And then there is a way now to add images to Google Forms, but it's a little more complex and advanced. But if you're a real geeky, tucky girl, you're a boy, you can um, get out there and try that as well. These are from the Flubaroo website. They have great resources here. Um, this is really just the two overview and, and tutorial. The website, it's so simple that they really don't have a lot of resources. But there is a Flubaroo blog out there with information as well. Um, one of the things I wanted to bring to your attention is, 
uh, the note right here that says do not sort data in your original spreadsheet. Um, when you get those results back of your students, we're all wanting to look at that data and sort it, but it can kind of compromise the integrity of your, your data in your spreadsheet as it's related to the form and it will also confuse the email um, address that's, that's kind of married to that information on that that's been put in that spreadsheet. So the developer of Flubrew is working on part of the improvement of the email functionality. So if you're going to sort the data, it's best to go up into the spreadsheet and just go to file, make a copy, and then take that copy and use that to do your data sorting and then your original will stay intact. Um, can you have more than one right answer? Yes. Sometimes you may have two right answers. Can, one of the things you can also do is color code responses. So if it's a true false, all the trues would be green and the, the falses would be red and you can get a quick visual. And there's some information here just by doing conditional formatting. Um, I think we've already talked about what's coming soon, but here is some flubrew on Twitter. Richard Byrne has a great resource for Google Drive. It's a great um, kind of a, a little PDF online tutorial booklet and on page 58 that has he has lots of information there on Flubrew. On page 53 talks about forms, on 58 talks about Flubrew as well. And then this was just our practice test we took earlier. So I think pretty much that's um, all the resources that, that I can find for you are pretty much what we went through today so you should be able to find um, the things you want. One thing I might mention, sometimes browsers are a little finicky with some of the Google things. So if you're having any trouble with the browser you're in, I would suggest you try, you know, change browsers. Don't always blame Google or, or Flubaroo or the spreadsheet. Just think about what browser am I in. Always come back to that and try a different browser because once in a while that could be an issue as well. Um, so that was um, pretty much the new changes of forms and also information about Flubaroo. Any other ideas or questions? Tracy, anything else you'd like to join or add here? Um, no, I think that pretty much covers it. I put a couple of notes in there that if people have questions or need help, they can always uh, contact me. I'm happy to assist. Well, I think one thing that I love is that you've got your Google Plus turned on. And you're, <laughs> yes. you're good. At, you've had your first experiment with Google Hangouts. Uh, you can see the value in it. Look at the communities. The Google Plus communities are awesome. Do some searches for some different topics in education because there's lots of information in there as well. And I think that you're you going to find the Flubrew is awesome as well. Yeah. Yes, ma'am? Do you know do you know if Flubrew has a community? I know Google's has several. Google, you know, yes, apps and ed and, and so on, but I didn't, I didn't know if there was anything for Flubrew. I don't know if you're not. I know I have the two the, the some of the ones you might be interested in. I have iPad Ed, that's one I have. Uh huh. I have iPhonography and education, and I have um, digital textbooks and online resources. Those are three that I've started. Oh, I'll have to look for the digital textbooks books yeah, one. Yeah, digital textbooks and online resources. But you can pretty much do one for anything. So I, I don't know if Flubaroo itself will be one. It's pretty much what you see is what you get with Flubaroo. Uh, there is a great webinar that, that's available that you can watch. It's actually from the person who made Flubaroo. He's one of the Google employees who did this 20% time. You know, Google gives employees 20% <laughs> time to go yeah. off. Mm -hmm. and, uh, this is his 20% time and if you're into scripting, there, he also tells you how you can go in and, and help with some of these new changes because it is open source. He would love to have mm -hmm. people help. So if you know someone who's a good scripter, get them in there to help with Flubaroo. But it's Great. such an easy tool to use. I hope, I hope that you're going to get some ideas on how you can build a quick form. Just do one with two or three things and you can have massive amounts of information and Flubaroo can grade it so quickly. Yeah, that's what's handy. Okay. All right, well, thank you, everybody, for coming. Have a great evening. I'm glad you were here. I am so sorry it was slow getting started, but I think we had um, some good conversations. I hope that you learned something you can use as a tool to make your life more effective in the classroom and help with your teaching. Mm -hmm. Thanks all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>